It says so. So he never left. He was there, but in a different form. But in the spirit. Come on. Jesus came. God himself. The word became flesh. It says, he again walked on earth. How faithful is our God. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Oh, he did a wonderful thing. He set us free from anything you can think of. Every Jesus is the light of the world. The light shines in on the darkness. And darkness has never comprehended it. It has never absorbed it. It has never overcome it. Our hope is Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us so that you and me today can have life. Jesus ascended. He went back to the earth. Did he leave us alone? He said, I'm not leaving you often. I'm leaving you with the Holy Spirit. Who is he? He's our help. He's our advocate. He's our comforter. Hey, he's our counselor. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. He will never I leave us, no forsake us. Do you see God throughout? Does he change? Does he ever, ever change? He is faithful, and he will remain faithful. He will find you at the world. I, I like to say this. This thing is not a group work. This thing is not a partnership. This thing is not a partnership. You need to find him on your own. And he says, seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened. He's giving the, us that authority. He's giving us that right. Jesus said, anyone who believes in me, yes. oh Lord, yes. he will be able to do what I have done, even greater things. Oh, yes. Anyone who believes in him, he has given him the right to become a child of God. What does that mean? It means I'm the heir of heaven. Whatever that I call, that is in regard with the will of the Father. He will do unto me. We don't realize the power that we have. And that is the Holy Spirit. We don't acknowledge him. But that is the plan of the evil. So that we don't know him. Because without him, there is no power. I'm almost done. There the disciples, I always go like, what was happening? They were walking with Christ. They saw everything that he did. But sometimes it's like it didn't click. Hey, and I realized they were missing something. The power, the anointing, the Holy Spirit. Bonapit. Look at Peter. Before and after the Holy Spirit. Different person. So, how blessed are we whenever we do to have the Holy Spirit with us? He is the power. And you can find him. One, one last scripture. Luke 18. Luke 11. Um, let's just read uh, verse 13. verse 13. Luke 11, verse 13. Even though you are bad, you know how to give God things 
You know how to give good things to your children. How much more your heavenly father will give to the Holy, the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Amen. It's there. You just need to go to him. Believe in your heart and ask him of the Holy Spirit and he will give it to you. It's not reserved for special people. Every one of us has the right. That's why that temple in Jerusalem it had to go. It's not a building. Deep down in our hearts that is the power that we call on that is the power that has given unto you by Christ Jesus to say you can tread upon scorpions and serpents. Even all powers, the devil himself, if a money hour follow Hodimon like a lightning, what is the devil before Jesus? The word says that without him, nothing was made that was made. Hey, we don't know our power. There is this that's always like at the back of my mind. Back then, when my kids were still watching TV, they no longer do. But that's a sermon for another day. There was this character. Ne? He said, hey, you know how hard it is not to use my power. For us, like we're saying, you know how easy it is not to use this power. We forget the power. The Holy Spirit is our power. Kemang abu zing the Red Sea. Kemang atu si zeng mulo. Kemang atu si zeng Jesu. That resurrection power is in us. Let's use it. Let us know who we are. I to leave. As we do, man, become my sister. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He will find you at the word. And when he finds you, his characteristics are revealed. You got to know who he is. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He knows everything about us. Can we please read from the book of Psalm 139? 139 verse 1 to 4. You have searched me, Lord, and now you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. For thy God, he knows us. He knows, he knows everything that we do. And then, there is a letter that is adding to them. John 4, verse 16. John 4, verse 16. He told her, go, call your husband and come back. Okay. So, the so, Lord knows us individually. And then, because he knows us individually, we see his glory manifesting when he tells us everything about us. Everything intimately. Because he, he says to the Samaritan, call your husband, 
And she says, I don't have a husband. And he knows. Then he tells her, you don't have a husband, but you had five. But the one you have now is not even yours. So he can identify people in our life. Those we will regard them as partners, meanwhile they are not. He knows everything. He will show up. He will show up all of a sudden. And when he shows up, we should be ready for him. Ready to receive whatever he has in store for us. Because it's for our own good. At a wedding, we need to be like women and go lenyalo. When the bride is about to throw that bouquet, do you see how they prepare themselves? They focus. It doesn't matter if that bouquet is thrown up, then they go into a jump and grab it because they believe if they grab that bouquet, whatever they long for will be fulfilled. He's a God who knows us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And when he finds you and he tells you something, it will be something that you won't be able to keep to yourself. You will want to go out there and talk to the people about what you have heard. This gospel it needs women who are prepared to leave everything behind them and go out to the people and talk to them about the experiences that they encountered with God. Just like the Samaritan. Hallelujah. Amen. He will find you at the way. It needs women who are more than conquerors. Women who are given power over their authority. They are given power. They are given authority over the power of the enemy. Women who are strong in the Lord. Women who are Christ ambassadors. Two. Ephesians chapter 1. Chapter 2 verse 10. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. He has set the standard. He has laid the foundation. The foundation where we must build on. In the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. Verse 8 to 10. Verse 8 to 10. Verse 8 to 10. One day Elisha went to Shunem. And a well-to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room on the roof and put in it a bed and a table, a chair, and a lamp for him. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. So the Shumamite was a woman of the Lord. She could see where help is needed. When Elisha was passing by, she could call him and offer him food and offer him shelter. Then one day, then the Elisha asked the Shumamite, he said to her, I mean, you've, you've been going all through this trouble for us. What would you like us to do for you? Then the Shumamite answered, 
I live amongst my people. So you have to be amongst people to identify their needs. You have to be amongst people to be in touch with their reality. You can't be far removed from them because we are God's workmanship. God has prepared us to do this work for you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Then the tragedy strikes in a household. She was able to gather herself. She didn't sit and cry. She got up. When she was asked, what is wrong with you? She says, all is well. She, 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 she speaks word to power. She she understands. She understands because she knows. When she speaks this word to existence, the word of God on the book of Proverbs 18, verse 21, it says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. That's why she said, All is well. Even when she just lost her son. Then, when we go back to the Samaritan, after she had everything, she goes to the people. Then the people ask her, can we come with you to go and see this Jesus? Then she went there with them. I mean, they went there with, with her. When they had everything, they were able to say to her, to the Lord, you know, we've heard all what you have said about Jesus. And it's not even about what we have heard from you, the Samaritan. It's about what we hear now. What Jesus is saying. Because the importance of the testimony is that seeing what the Lord has done to people, it strengthens our own faith. Because the word of God says faith comes from here and, and hearing the word of God. God. I don't know which well the Lord will find you at. Maybe it will be at a place where you don't know. You are in a relationship. You don't know what's going on. That's where the answers you will get. The Lord will give you those answers at the way. He will find you at the well. Pastor said it last week. Protect your well. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Gracious Jehovah. Yes, Lord. Honor, glory you are worthy to be belongs praised. to you. Um, thank you for your word. El Shaddai. Lord, I scatter everything that would steal the words that we have just heard. In the name of Jesus, may your word bring change in our lives. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Your word is sharper than two-edged sword. May it does that this morning. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jwale kibo ni si di ba sa ni ti Hallelujah. Si di ba se. Ma po di si mo na ti juale juale ki bo ni si di ba. 
hallelujah sanity sidi masena sidi ibase se mapodi se muho nahati jahale jale kibo onisi jiba sa Sidibasena sema podi. This well is quench. Sidibasena semonadi. It is wonderful. This well which is Jesus. Sidibasena se o ilenjis. Ori mina togo. Ori nkeli sidibasela ngi atlatela. Without this well, I am running astray. Ari kifela. He says only. Hakina mudimu. That I don't have God. I cannot help. I don't have hope. Holy fever. It is too dark. Happy lignora lingamile. And the thirst has held me. Arikitiyedwi. He says I am troubled. But. Impa. But. Impa. Kiboni sidi. I have seen a well. But. Impa. I have seen a well. Kiboni sidi. But Bazalwani, it doesn't stop he at us seeing the well. We have to drink from <laughs> this well. We don't stop at the well. We are not being found only at the well. But we are to drink from this well. Hallelujah. Why do we have to drink from this well? Because it is said that the abundance of who I am whether in good, whether in bad, it is determined by the well where I drink from. Hallelujah. Amen. I have to drink from this well. Then Sidibasena, because I, I drink from this drink from this well. I don't talk like those who do not drink from this well. I don't speak the way Baba Ambassador Nguyen was in the When this. things are hard, because I drink from this well, I know where to go to. Because I know, only job I know, and I know that my Redeemer lives. That is why I have to be found in this world, next to the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We drinking from this world. Well, we're drinking from this well, Bazalwani, and we have to thirst. One thing that we need to know, when you drink, it depends on the thirst that you have. How much is your thirst? The Bible says in John, John, is it John 14? Jesus says, Who is the living water? It is where we are drinking. He says from. that whoever drinks the water I will give will never thirst. Hallelujah. And instead, livers of living water. 
We will be the rivers. The living waters. We'll become rivers. Hallelujah. Amen. Where people need to come and draw from us. When people they are lonely. If they feel that they are distressed. They know where to go to. Because you are not like them. You are drinking from the river. And that which you are. You are able to set up to Hallelujah. You know, Mutahana Jwala. When someone drinks alcohol. We might not see the person. But the effects of what he, he, he drank, we will see. So us also, when we drink from this well, we might not be seen sometimes, but we will see the effect of that which you took. Hallelujah. So Bazalwani, let us drink from this well. Let us drink from this well. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 81 verse 10. Psalm 81 verse 10. It you says, open your hands and satisfy the desire of every living thing. I like it uh, this way. Yeah, the special. It says, open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Open wide your mouth. If you're thirsty, you will open wide your mouth. Sometimes you'll even drink more than two, two glasses of water because of the thirst. Hallelujah. Amen. As you open, he would fail. Living water. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Going back to the, the theme, he will find you at the world. He will find you at the world. Now looking at this woman, the, Samar the Samaritan woman, if I am to summarize everything about this woman, it's about Jesus saying to this woman, even to us, because Jesus starts by saying to this woman, give me a drink. Give me a drink. And yet, you know, the the the, the the funny part is, Jesus, my sister spoke and even my toilet spoke about Jesus knowing everything. He knew who this woman was. He knew everything about this woman. Yet he did not expose him. Hey. He did not expose her. Instead, he says to her, bring me. What is it that this woman is supposed to give to Jesus? Jesus says, bring me that is not of satisfactory to your life. Give me that is of a challenge in your life. Give me that is hurting you. Give me that which doesn't satisfy you. Give me that gives you sleepless nights. And I will give you rest. And I will give you rest. That which you want as the one, it's, it's temporarily but I have something that will last forever. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus gives us something Jesus. that will last forever. Last forever. We thank the Lord. The power that Master spoke about, the resurrection power is in us. No situation is above us because we have the source of life and it doesn't end there. The person who gives 
Jesus, the source of life. He says that the very same source would be in us. Hallelujah. Amen. But alone, we need to be thirsty. We need to hunger. We need to hunger for us to enjoy this life. For us to enjoy this Christian life. We need to be always found at the world. And not just at the world, but drinking from this world. Hallelujah. I'm just going to give you examples of people. By long haul, they were thirsty. They were hungry. They were desperate. They were desperate for God in their lives. Hallelujah. Amen. It's first Samuel. Samuel Wapi. Verse 9. Verse 9. Then she pulled herself together, slipped away quietly, and entered the sanctuary. The priest Eli was on duty at the entrance. To God's temple, in the customary seat, crushed in soul. Hallelujah. Crushed. Amen. Crushed in soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hannah prayed to God and cried and cried inconsolably. Inconsolably. Allah. Allah. Amen. Amen. Because... She was thirsty for God. She was desperate for God to give her a breakthrough in her life. Hallelujah. Then she made a vow, O oh God of the angel armies, if you will take a good hard look at my pain, if you will quit neglecting me and go into action for me Hallelujah. by giving me a Amen. Amen. Do you see the desperation or desperate situation that this woman finds herself in? She goes to God and says, please take a good look. A hard look at my pain. Don't just look at me. Look at me. The pain that I'm in. And if it's that, don't quit. And it says, Neglecting me. Hey, if you drink from this well, you have the right of talking to God like this. Not everybody is able to talk to God like this woman. Huh. Hallelujah. Ermudim, don't quit neglecting me. How true? go into action for me. Are act in this situation. Do something, Lord. I am desperate, Lord. Do something in this situation that I find myself in. The action is give me a sign. I, Harry, a child. Specific. She is specific to say, give me. Yes. If you know the one that you serve, when you go to him, you become specific. Don't just say, Bless me. Uh -uh. You go to him and say, This is what I want. Because I know that when now you are the creator, everything is in your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Bella 12 and 14, I think it's the next slide. Yeah. Yes. It so happened that as she continued in prayer before God, Eli was watching her closely. Anna was praying in her heart silently. Her lips moved, but no sound was heard. 
Ellie jumped to the conclusion that she was drunk. Mm. He approached her and said, you are drunk. How can you, am I right? How long, How do, long you? do you plan to keep this up? Uh, sober up, woman. Hallelujah. Can you stop there? When you are desperate, it doesn't matter or what people are saying to you. They might see you drunk. They might say to you, sober up. But if you know how desperate you are for your breakthrough, you will continue. Look at the answer that woman gives to Ed. What does she say? Anna said, oh no, say, please, I'm a woman broken hearted. Mm. Having been drinking not a drop of wine or beer, the only thing I have been pouring out is my heart. Yes. Pouring it out to God. The only thing that I'm here for is to pour my heart unto you. I'm here to pour out my heart unto my God who knows everything about me, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. We lose our breakthrough because we focus more on what people are saying to us. This woman did not focus on what others were saying, not what the priest just said. Did not focus on that. Some of us, we quit coming to, to church because somebody said this. Yay! If you know, and you know, what they are saying to you, it's not going to matter. You are pouring your heart unto your creator. You are pouring your heart unto your maker who knows everything, who is able to do everything. Hallelujah. Let's pour our hearts unto the God. Hallelujah. You know the beauty about this once you are in God, once you have a relationship with God, a transformation in your life. This woman, Hannah, when she went to, to, to the temple, she went there as a barren woman. She went there as a barren woman. But let's look at what her coming out. The Bible says. Give the next slide. Eli answered her. Go in peace. And may God of Israel give you what you have asked of him. Then she ate heartily. Her face was radiant. Hallelujah. Her face now, when she went in, when she went in, she was barren. When she went in, she was heartbroken. When she went in, she felt that she was neglected by God. When she went in, she was desperate for a son. But let's look at her. When she leaves the temple, the Bible says her face was radiant. Her face was radiant. This is the God that we serve. This is the God that we serve. Beloved, you cannot be in contact with God. You cannot be in the presence of God and remain the same. Something has to change. Something has to change. Something has to change. Has to change. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look at another, another person. The woman with the issue of blood. It said that they don't even tell us her name. No. She's being described <laughs> by what she's going through. So, ah, Jesus. 
All of us sometimes we're being described and like that. Or la mutsiba. Ke ola sinang bana. La mutsiba ke ola monna ha ya nanga mushaba. Ke ola sa nyalwang. She's that unmarried one. But when you come to Jesus, he changes the story. He changes the story. Now this woman with the issue of blood, I like what she said. The Bible says she kept on saying to herself. Mm. She kept on saying to herself, what are you keep on saying to yourself? What are you saying to yourself? What are you saying to yourself this morning? This woman said, if only. But before she did the act, she kept on saying, if only. If only. I can touch the hem of his garment. And then Leena, she's specific. She says, then I'll be healed. Then I'll be healed. Hannah said, give me a sign. This one says, then I'll be healed. Hallelujah. And she received that. The last one, Bartholomew's. The Bible says, when he heard that Jesus was coming, when he heard that Jesus was coming, he shouted and he said, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. It ends there. Now, there were people. Remember the story of Hannah? There was the priest who said, Hey, when you are drunk, sober up. Now, in this case, they are saying to him, You are making noise. Shh. Shh. But if you know, and you know, and you know, that there's a breakthrough that I'm gunning for. No one will make you to keep quiet. The more they said it, the more he shouted louder. The more he shouted louder when they said, keep quiet. Said, Jesus! When they said, Warasa. She said, Jesus, 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 have mercy on me. That is a sign of desperation. And if you are desperate for a breakthrough, people's opinion don't matter. People's actions don't matter. You know that there is Something that I need to find. Hallelujah. Amen. Even with the woman, the Samaritan woman, when she went to the well, her purpose was to fetch water. But after she found waters of the, li the living waters, the Bible says she even left her jar at the well because she found something something that is so unmeasurable because she found the living water hallelujah Amen. without desperation Hannah was not going to receive Samuel hallelujah Amen. without desperation and thirst for God the woman with the issue of blood, the blood was not going to stop flowing. But, but him, Bartimia, without him persisting, even if there were people who were saying to him, keep quiet, and he did not, 
If he had kept quiet, he wouldn't have received his sight. He wouldn't have received his sight. He pushed and pushed and pushed until he received. Hallelujah. Vazalwan, for us to obtain or to get that which God has in store for us, we need to push. We need to push. I'm going to conclude with this. Uh, there was this man. Uh, this is one person who would always be joyful in the presence of the Lord because he understood that in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. Now this person, every time Kokre King, they would preach during worship, he would be excited. He would be the only one who said, Hallelujah! Glory to God! Hallelujah! Then one time, um, and the sad thing about this person, um, he had lack in his life. So the church used to assist. In fact, the pastor used to assist him. So it was announced that uh, they were going to have a speaker, a somebody very important who would be coming to preach at the church. So the pastor bought him shoes. And after that, during the service, when, when the important person was now here, uh, the pastor said to him, I know that when now you get excited in the presence of the Lord. And that's where we're supposed to get excited. I know you, you always get excited. But today, please, I'm begging you, behavior. Hey, we have a very special person in our midst. Behave, yeah, behave, behave yourself. Then the, the, the service started. Now this guy, there's something that is burning in him. There's some, remember, he's wearing new shoes for the very first time in his life. Now he's wearing new shoes. <laughs> then something is burning in him. I mean, you cannot stop us. You cannot stop who we are. Then every time that excitement rises, he looks at the shoes and says, hey, these shoes, man. Hey, these shoes. These shoes. I, but you know, Bible, the word of God is burning in me like fire. When the things of God are now burning. I, this guy said, no ways. Then as, as the, the, the service was continued, and the guy felt the excitement to be in the presence of the Lord, he looked at the pastor. He looked at the shoes. He looked at the pastor. All right. Shoes of new shoes. Shoes of new shoes. May God be glorified. Hallelujah. May God be glorified. We thank the Lord behind you. That is the God that we serve. But let me end with this. Revelation 3 verse 16. It says, I know your deeds. Hallelujah. You are neither cold nor hot. How I wish you were one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to vomit you out of my mouth. Ah, alone. Beloved. Let it not be about the excitement. The Bible says, I know your deeds. So in Christian life, you cannot be found in the middle. You cannot be neutral. You are either in or you are out. 
So it's about time that we hunger for the presence of the Lord. It's about time that we say we are being found at the well because there is life. Hallelujah. Let us hunger for the presence of the Lord because if we don't, we cannot be neutral. You are not saved. You know or not. But today, we are saying the only person that our lives should be directed by it's God himself. And we are going to be in fire in this gospel. We're going to live for God. May our lives attest that we live for God. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, he touched me. Oh, he touched me.